Hi! So this video has been a long time coming. <laughs> um, I am almost a year postpartum now. My son will turn a year in two weeks. I can't believe it. Oh my gosh. Every time really does fly, it's crazy, but at the same time, I feel like I've known him my entire life. I feel like he's always been a part of my life. Uh, I just love him, but um, this video is going to be about me. <laughs> so this video is going to be talking about the weight gain um, that occurred <laughs> during my pregnancy. Um, and I just want to kind of openly reflect on the experience and, you know, kind of like just cover the reasons why it happened. Um, over the last year, I've done a lot of reflecting and just trying to work on the issues that may have caused me gaining extra weight while I was pregnant. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Um, yeah, I mean, pregnancy, first off, is really hard. <laughs> if you have been pregnant, you know this. <laughs> um, if you haven't been pregnant, it is really hard. <laughs> Um, you know, so for me, we found out, my husband and I found out that I was pregnant a couple months after I had graduated from college and I had just started my first big girl job. Um, and if you guys know me, you probably do if you're watching this video, <laughs> um, you guys know I'm an online coach. So I started my coaching business right when I found out I was pregnant, like right before. And I was doing my coaching business part time. Um, and I wanted to, I was pursuing doing it full time. So the stress of the unplanned pregnancy and just having started a big girl job and trying to pursue a business, um, needless to say, I was terrified. I didn't know if we were going to be able to, you know, provide for our family. And um, I was really stressed out. I am definitely the type of person that likes to plan things. And I'm also, um, I've struggled with anxiety my entire life. So I was really stressed out. <laughs> so the first thing that happened in the first trimester, um, I was sick a lot. You know, the morning sickness was terrible. <laughs> and every day, like I woke up and it felt like a hangover. It felt like I had got really drunk the night before. Um, just... I felt so nauseous and terrible and the only time that I didn't feel this way was when I was eating or like had a substantial amount of food in my stomach so that kind of started the weight gain um, the first trimester I think I gained like seven pounds so not terrible but you don't really need to gain any weight in the first trimester um, and yeah I definitely attribute that to just eating a lot um, because I was nauseous, but also it definitely had a big part to do with um, just being stressed out and emotional eating because I've dealt with emotional eating from pretty much you know my whole life as long as I can remember. Um, so before I got pregnant, you know, I had lost the hundred pounds and I had definitely worked on my food issues and flexible dieting, like tracking my macros helped a lot with food issues because, um, I guess I still have that, like that room to fit in, you know, some ice cream or some pizza or like something that was more comforting. And so I was still able to have that comfort food. Um, so that was kind of like the way I just dealt with it before is just trying to deal with my emotions in different ways too. So a lot of you guys that know me know that like I've worked really hard to just become a more positive person and be kinder to myself. Um, I've worked really hard on like my self love and my body image. So um, just finding different outlets of stress. So like I love writing and kind of like meditating, reflecting. Um, I don't do like the classical meditation. Maybe that's something that I'll share with you guys eventually. But um, yeah, reading and writing is just kind of like my uh, outlet to my emotions other than food. And then also like walking. Now that I have Marshall, I love taking Marshall on walks. Um, that's a really good stress reliever for me. But yeah, finding different ways to deal with my stress or my emotions was a huge help. And then obviously um, having, you know, the wiggle room in my diet to be able to fit treats in to feel like I could still get that comfort food. So I had felt like I was in an okay place when I got pregnant. Um, but I definitely now know that that wasn't the case, that I was kind of just putting a band-aid on a more serious issue 
Um, and that, and I say that in regards to using flexible dieting as a way to control my emotions. Um, definitely finding other outlets for my emotional eating was so helpful. Like the walking and the, the reading and the writing. Um, so, and like just exercising in general, lifting weights is, I say it all the time, it's my therapy. Like I love lifting and it's just such a big stress reliever for me. So when I got pregnant, it was really hard to lift. Um, during the first trimester, I was really sick. So it was really hard to get to the gym. I will say that when I got my butt to the gym and did a light workout, it did make me feel better. It made me feel less nauseous. So when I got to the gym, it helped, but it was really hard to even get there. I just felt terrible. Um, so I think losing that outlet of stress relief affected me um, because I was stressed out about the pregnancy and I felt like I couldn't lift anymore um, and I was you know nauseous all the time and eating helped that so I think just the mix of these three things started the weight gain and then as I saw the number on the scale go up it freaked me out even more because over the past two years I was used to losing and losing and losing weight lost 100 pounds over two years, and then got pregnant. So watching that scale go up was really messed with my head. It messes with people, it really does. Um, so I think that perpetuated the problem as well. And then it just kind of turned into a fuck it situation where I just was like, you know, I'm just gonna say yes. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this pregnancy as an opportunity to eat all the things that I didn't allow myself to eat because even though I was flexible dieting, it's still a diet and I was still at a deficit. So I was having to say no all the time to things that I wanted, whether it be a drink or a garlic bread or a donut, an extra cookie, like whatever. All these things while I was pregnant, I got in my head that I could say yes to and I did. Um, so overall, in my pregnancy, I had gained about 55, almost 60 pounds. Um, so 35 pounds of that was extra weight. So when I had Marshall, I had about 40 pounds to lose after, right after I had Marshall. Um, once I got to six weeks postpartum, I, was, I had about 35 pounds that I had to lose, that I had to really actually work towards losing. Um, so that was hard. That was definitely hard coming to terms with the fact that I had this weight to lose. So now I'm going to share with you what I have learned from gaining the weight back, some of the weight back. Um, and this goes for anyone that has lost a lot of weight and is struggling with maintaining it, not just, you know, pregnancy, postpartum experience. Um, so one big thing that I have learned over the past year, because now I'm mean, one year postpartum and I've pretty much been dieting um, for a year, I've lost the 35 pounds, so I'm back down to my pre-pregnancy weight, and it took me about a year to lose that 35 pounds. Um, I've always lost weight at a slow, steady pace, about one to two pounds a week, because this is what works for me, this is what keeps me sane, um, this is what keeps me on track, and this is, for the most part, what keeps me from throwing in the towel and gaining it back. But what I learned is that even if you're taking the slow and steady pace, you still need to take diet breaks. So I recommend every 12 weeks of dieting taking three to four weeks off from dieting because your body it really isn't made to be at a deficit for that long. And it's mentally exhausting, physically and mentally exhausting. So my recommendation is every 12 weeks, I really wish that I did this and I'm implementing it now and it's making such a big difference in my mental health that I think it's going to make a really big difference in my physical health in the long run. So every 12 weeks, I highly recommend taking a break from dieting or being at a deficit and you know, if you if you track your calories like I do, track at maintenance for a few weeks or just loosely track. Um, because what this will hopefully do is help you to not get burnt out. When you get burnt out from dieting, you just lose your motivation. You just throw in the towel and you kind of just feel like you're spinning your wheels for a really long time. Weeks and weeks of not having motivation and doing really well at the beginning of the day. And then it dwindles and then at the end of the night, you just eat whatever and, and say F it. So taking breaks will hopefully keep you from 
going wild from getting burnout and just throwing in the towel. Um, the other thing that I said before, you know, that I've always done is take my time, slow, steady, sustainable progress. I've seen so many people do low calorie diets and they just gain it all back um, or a lot of it back and they just get stuck in the cycle of yo-yo dieting. And I've talked about this a lot before. Um, what's happening is you're just stuck in this cycle of over-restricting and then binging and then over-restricting and then binging. So um, that is why I've always taken my time. The next thing is think about this as a lifestyle. Make this a lifelong commitment. This shouldn't be a quick fix, lose the weight, and then back to your old habits. It's not going to work like that. That's how you're going to gain the weight back. Um, so, you know, don't freak out over a social gathering. If you have plans to go out, if it's a holiday or whatever, you know, that shouldn't give you stress. And if you decide that you want that outing, that holiday off, that's okay. Accept it. It's a lot easier to accept a bad day or a day off or whatever, that extra drink that you probably shouldn't have ordered or extra cookie that you had. It's a lot easier to accept that when you think of this as a lifelong commitment. You don't freak out so much about one or two bad days, even a bad week, because you know in the long run that you're overall consistent with taking care of yourself. Um, like I just said, you want to take the breaks. So frequent breaks will help keep you from feeling burnout. We just covered that. Um, you know, just focus on, in regards to the lifestyle change, focus less on the physical results. Obviously, physical results are awesome. You know, I love seeing new, new muscles pop out. I love, you know, feeling a little bit leaner or whatever, seeing... Um, progress on the scale or, or the with the measurements of course but I also love feeling better after a workout or you know feeling really good from giving my body healthy clean foods um, I, I love the feeling that my mind and my soul get from having a balanced diet from taking care of myself but also allowing myself treats and not treating myself badly because of it so focus on you know, how you feel more. And that should help you stay on track and just not want to throw in the towel. And the last thing that I could say is always a great idea is to love yourself. Um, when I started this journey, I definitely didn't love myself and I definitely wanted to lose the weight because I hated myself. So um, I don't condone it, but you know, it's, it's true. Um, but over my journey, I started learning about self-love and, you know, I wasn't at my leanest when I started working on loving myself because I realized that hating myself was only getting me so far. It was only giving me those short-term, you know, that short-term motivation. I'd be motivated to lose some weight. And when I did, I'd be super happy. But if I had a bad day or a bad week, I'd get so down on myself about it. So, when I started working on loving myself and just being more positive and being kinder to myself, I was actually not, it wasn't as fiery, as passionate of a motivation as hating myself was. I'm going to be completely honest here. Um, hating my body gave me that fiery passion to want to change it. But loving my body gave me not as strong as a passion or a fire to change, but it was something that I was able, it didn't burn out. I was able to keep that flame alive for ever, for my whole life. I will always love myself. Not every day is easy. Some days I have bad body image days or I'm just down on myself and, you know, in general. Um, but overall, you know, I really do truly love and care for myself and my body. And feeling that way is what keeps me going. It's what keeps me going when I'm not super motivated to get a workout done or to eat healthy. Loving myself keeps me going because I think to myself, well, you know, I'm my body and my mind and my soul are going to feel better if I do this workout. And that's not always the case. You know, some days I really have to sit there. Actually, great example, Sunday. Sunday I missed a workout because I didn't get enough sleep that night and I just mentally was exhausted too 
didn't get enough to eat that day so you know i sat and reflected for a second and i said you know my body my (laughs) mind and my soul will benefit more from me not training today but most of the time my body my mind my soul benefits greatly from working out from you know getting a sweat in and and getting my heart rate up um and the same thing with with eating you know healthy most of the time (laughs) almost always it uh, benefits my mind body and soul and i say mind and soul because that plays such an important part in your health too so some days you know i just need to have a lot more cookies than salad or green smoothies you know it's it's not, and I don't freak out about it. And I used to, I used to get so stressed out if I had a day like that, but now I don't. And I think that not freaking out about it helps those days not be so common, so frequent because I accept it and I move on from it. When I feel guilty, I get stuck in that feeling and I feel like it just perpetuates the problem. It just makes me binge or overeat or not care more when I'm hard on myself about it. So when I'm kind to myself, I feel like it, it gets me a lot further. So I hope this video is helpful to you if you've been struggling with maintaining your weight loss or if you're scared about you know maintaining your weight loss if you're in the middle of losing it right now or if you just had a baby or you're pregnant or whatever. Um, I hope that this can provide some insight for your journey because um, you know the last year, in the last two years, being pregnant and one year postpartum, um, for me personally and my journey has been very challenging, but it has been very eye-opening and I have learned a lot and I feel like I've grown a lot as a person. So I'm very appreciative for the last two years and ultimately they've brought me my son and my, you know, I love my family more than anything. So everything I've gone through is completely worth it because of Marshall, but I'm just glad that I've been able to take this opportunity and turn it into a more positive thing, something that I can share with others that they can learn from, and something that I was able to grow from because I want my son to grow up seeing his mother being strong and secure in herself. And I think these two years have definitely helped me get to that point. So thanks for watching.